Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to create a controlled input. Uh, your application may have more complex interactions between state and the rendered user interface. For example, form control elements for text elements, such as input and text area, maintain their own state in the DOM as the user types. So what's this basically saying? Your form control elements for text input. So if you have more complex interactions between state. In the last one we were just adding, uh, if you click this button, this number is going to go up. That's a very simple thing. Um, there's no way for people to sort of write weird stuff into it, right? But if you have something like input or text area, the, I mean, in the text area, people could write whole programs in there, right? So we want to maintain their own state in the DOM as the user types. When React, with React, you can move this mutable state into React Components state. The user's input becomes a part of the application state. So React controls the value of the input field. Typically, if you have React components with input fields the user can type into, it will be a controlled input form. Uh, the code editor has the skeleton of a component called controlled input to create controlled input element. The co component state is already initialized with an input property that holds an empty string, an input property that holds an empty string. And this is where they were saying this is the controlled input uh, element. When they say element, that's because it's within a single div. Uh, the, the, this value represents the, the te text a user types into the input field. First create a method called handle change. That has a parameter called event. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is create a method called handle change. And then inside of handle change we want to create a parameter called event. Uh, when the method is called, it receives an event object that contains a string of text from the input element. This dot state dot input. Okay. The value represents the text. First, create a method called handle change. Okay. Update the input of property of the component state with the new string. When the method is called it receives an event object so an event object so this is being passed in an object that contains a string of text from the input element so event is an object with a string of text from the event element you can access the string with okay so event dot target dot value so this is going to be whatever is being passed in the value of that contains the string of text from the input element. You can access, okay. You update the input property of the component state with this new string. Update the input property of the component's state with this new string. Okay, so what we want to do here is say this dot state, no, this dot set state, and we're setting the state to be equal to an, an element in which input is equal to event.target.value. Cool. I hope that makes sense. So this dot set state, so we're setting the state, which is here, this dot set state, and then we're saying the input is equal to, so we're changing the value of the input to event, which is this guy, what's being passed into the event, dot target dot value. Event dot target. So here, this dot state dot input, so we're passing in uh, we want to be passing in that. I think we need to make a form next in here. Uh, update the input property of the component state with the new string. In the render method, create the input element above the h4 tag. So here's the h4 tag and we need to create an input element. Uh, at its very simplest, we could just write uh, input. And you can just use closed bracers with these too. So there we go. Now we have an input field. Um, Create input above the H4. Add a value attribute which is equal to the input property of the component state. So I guess we would say value is equal to, which is equal to the input property, this dot state dot input. Does that make sense? Value, or so we've created an in, in, in which the input has a value and it, we're, we're setting it equal to the component, so this dot state this dot state dot input. So here we have it set as a default var as an empty string, but we have also 
said this.state.input is equal to the what the output here. If I put an exclamation point here, you'll see that this, because it's nil right now, there's nothing here, we're actually rendering out nothing. And so uh, this is just displaying the input. Uh, when you type in the input box, the, that text is processed by handle change. You type in the input box. So this should be work. It, should, it won't work right now, right? Um, does it tell us to do that? Then add on change event handler set to hand, handle change method. Okay, this is actually something. Then add on change. So here we want to go back to our input. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say on change. Yeah, change. We're going to call um, this dot handle change. Error open browser console. Okay, cool. Um, that does, doesn't surprise me that it's not working. Why? Because we haven't binded the handle change method to the uh, state. Put property in the local state and renders the value of the input box. The component state is the single source of truth regarding your, the input data. So here, but least but not least, last but not least, don't forget to add the necessary bindings in the constructor. Okay, cool. So uh, this dot handle change is equal to uh, this dot handle change dot bind, and then we want to bind to this. Cool. And now this should work, but it's not. So let's run the test and see where we're at. Typing the input value, update the state and the value. Okay, so I actually uh, took some time off to debug this because I just couldn't figure it out. I had set state to be equal to, but set state is a function. So this is the way that I had it, right? And what we need to do is create set state as a function that we pass in a value. We don't set set state equal to something. So I'm changing set state to a function. And now you can see ASDF, as I type into here, uh, as I type into here, it's actually coming out here. So that means that I think that it's working now. Uh, let's run the test and see what happens. Looks like they passed. Okay, cool. So let's go over this one more time. We have a input, we, we created an input value. Um, well, this is a component. It's called controlled input component. The component has a render function, which means this is what's going to render to the document object model, meaning this guy here. When we're returning inside of a single div, which is because this is how React works, we pass in a single div, we are creating a single input value. This is JSX, so we write it like, like this, this input value, and where we have, we have the value of the input, so it's uh, whatever is in here is set to this.state.input. This component so the, an instance of this thing dot state dot input when we started this application it was blank but now it says useful programmer if we were to delete this or put an exclamation point here we basically set with each um, click of this object we are adding or subtracting from we are adjusting the input or this dot state dot value of input and so, yeah, this is just the existing code, the controlled input, and then this is being automatically updated with this.state.input. So right now, because we've added useful programmer into here, now we have our controlled input is, uh, or our control, our, our P element that has the uh, state is right here. And so the, what we need to do is make it so that this one, it says on change, we go this.handle click. So on the, every time that anything changes within this input value, we run this function, which we wrote in here, handle change. On change, handle change, this dot handle change. And then here, what we're saying is for this component that we've created, an instance of this component, we want to um, set the state. So we're changing the state. And what we're going to do is pass in the input uh, the event target value. So with handle change, we're passing in the event. Um, down here, we have this dot handle change. And handle change, if we were to console log here, the event, 
Um, so whatever we change now is going to show up in the console. And so we'll see when we're passing in, what we're passing in is the event. That's just how the value works. And so this has a ton of stuff in it, right? And somewhere in here, we're going to find the letter A, which is the value. But so the event is this huge object, right? So let's get more specific. What is the target of the event? So if we pass in target and we pass in A, now we've got a smaller object, but it's still very large. Why is that? Because the um, value is, uh, because this is just a big J JavaScript object. So that's just how React works. It's always passing around these huge objects. Um, so event.target, but if we go dot value here, and then we come up here, we pass in A, we're passing in just the simple value, which is just A. So when I say, and then if I say S, then it passes in AS. So let's make it UP for useful programmer. It passes in useful and then programmer. And so then, because, well, actually it passes in U and then it passes in up, right? And then what we're doing with each time that we handle this, every time the on change, so every time the input changes, we pass in, we pass to the handle change event, the event. And then we set that event, we set the state of this component to the new target event value. And so this console log is not needed for this thing. But uh, yeah, that's how this works. We've just updated the state to say useful programmer. And so uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.